Hello, welcome to another lesson on soundproofing and acoustics. Today is gonna to be a install video. I'm gonna show you how I installed my Zero International perimeter seal. This is the 770AA version, so this is their highest end perimeter seal. Um, but if you got some of a different brand of perimeter seal or even a different one of their models, it should be a similar install. And then I also installed a automatic door bottom, which is a soundproof acoustic seal where when the door closes, the bottom drops down and seals the bottom of the door. I will say up front that uh, that was a hard install and in the end I didn't really like it for the design of my door and so you'll learn a little bit about the things I did wrong, how what I would do differently, which I think is always the point of these videos is you learn from my mistakes and then you don't have to make them. So that's, that's the goal. Before we jump in, uh, I have a free soundproofing workshop which goes over everything I know about soundproofing and puts it all together in one single 45 minute workshop where you can learn you know, rather than watching a ton of my YouTube videos, you can get it all in one place. So to, to do that, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this video, uh, which will actually go through me installing these and teaching you how to do it as well. <laughs> Okay, before I jump into actually showing you how to install the door seals, I wanted to show you a before and after um, effect of what happened. So I'm gonna show you me playing drums without any door seals on the door, like before I installed these door seals. Well, I shouldn't say any door seals. I have the door seals that I had originally, but I don't have the Zero International seals. And then I'm gonna do a video after where it shows me playing the drums and you'll hear the difference. So you might say, oh, it's not a huge difference, but I thought there was a huge difference in the snare hit. So let's listen to this uh, before and after. So here's before. All right, now that we've got that, let's listen to the after video. So this is me playing after I've installed the perimeter seal and the door bottom seal. Pretty cool, right? So you can hear that there is a difference. Uh, I noticed it right away, even listening back on my phone. Like I said, again, I felt like the snare hit was much more muffled and, and wasn't coming through, which I think was probably from the higher frequencies getting through maybe little cracks and seals in the door that these perimeter seals, I think, did mostly. The door bottom, as you'll see, I'm not sure the door bottom is doing a ton, but it might be doing a little bit. All right, so let's go into actually how to install these and put them on your door. So here's what it comes like in the box, just kind of a long thing for the perimeter seal here. Um, three pieces. So I measured the space for the top part first across uh, my door here. Notice that I've already got a seal, so this will be the second seal. This is just some cheap Frost King seal, which does a pretty good job. I've marked my cut on the top piece of the perimeter seal. So you can see that, and I'm gonna use a hacksaw uh, to cut that. We'll see how that goes. So it says it's a good idea to run some uh, sealant, acoustic caulk or caulking, um, along the side that's going to be touching your frame. So I had some of this on hand. It's actually 50-year uh, crack resistant, reduced, you know, this is the stuff you really want to look for, the crack resistant 50 year painter's caulk. Um, that stuff will still work as acoustic sealant. It needs to remain flexible um, and that's the key. So I'm putting this uh, flexible sealant on here like this. Nothing too crazy. I think one bead will be plenty. You know, this is going to smush up and, and seal that up, which is what we want it to do, just make it really airtight. What's cool about this one, even though it's really expensive, is you can actually, as you can see, turn this guy and it'll push it into the door. 
So that'll help us get a super tight seal all the way across. Let's see here. You'll notice in your studio um, are that you'll notice that these cracks develop over time. And so while I'm here, I'm just going to use some acoustic um, non-hardening sealant and kind of hit some of these spots where, you know, the sound potentially could get through. So I just added some of that acoustic sealant right there. Um, same over here. So those gaps should be a little bit more sealed up for the next couple of years. And um, I've got this first one installed already. This is where I tried to, this is my alarm system, so I'm trying, I gotta fix that. Um, but yeah, I actually feel like it's already making a difference, which is crazy. Maybe the top was a weak point. So we'll see, let's do the rest. So with these seals, you can really cut them on either end. This end right here has the perfect 45 degree, so I'm tempted to leave that. Um, if I had to cut, it would be really close to this um, point here, which I read. Uh, in my door bottom that you shouldn't cut more than an inch close to this. So, you know, if this comes at a 45 degree angle here, I'm worried it'd get a little too close to that screw, the control screw. So I'm tempted to cut it down here. Unfortunately, it lands directly in the middle of uh, one of the set screws to, to push it in. But I think it'll be okay because honestly, this bottom part is going to be pushed up against by my door bottom and then I've got another screw not too far away. So I think I'm going to cut it right here um, and that'll sit on the bottom and then that side will go up top. So these things come with a little extra on the end so I'm just going to use a utility knife and cut that off. So here it is just uh, pushed into place and you know, there's like a little bit of a gap. So even, and this is their cut here and it might just be that this whole system here is not perfectly flush. Um, but on this side, there's really no overlap. The top piece kind of overlaps the bottom piece. So there's no air gap there. And I think honestly, I'd probably just put some acoustic sealant in that gap and just make it airtight. Um, so yeah, let's, let's install this bad boy. I'm gonna close the door. So with the door closed and me kind of pushing against it and getting it kind of where I want it to be, um, you know, I can get it like, that's not as good, but yeah, like it's much tighter. Um, so I'm gonna put again, some acoustic sealant all the way along the back of this guy, and then we're gonna drill it in. All right, here we go. We're just gonna do a bead. I made sure to make sure I'm putting it on the right side this time. Don't, don't make that mistake. Um, it's hard to do this and hold the camera. All right, so like I said, not the most perfect angle there, but the seal is what matters. So I don't know if I did that poor job there, but the seal is looking good across the door here all the way down. Um, except for what the heck is that Wilson? You might be wondering, that's what not to do. This is called uh, putting your back set too close. So we have a really wide back set. So I had Henry move these over, but now we have massive holes and this is not what you want to do. This is putty. It's like, it's probably not even doing much. What we should do is fill it with concrete or something. Um, but I'm going to put a metal plate over here to keep the seal continuous. Again, what not to do. Um, got our seals all the way down. Now I'm going to adjust these guys and see if I can tighten it even more. I think that's pushing it out. So actually counterclockwise pushes it out, it looks like. That's pretty good. Let's see what this one's like. This one's a lot looser. Oh yeah, that's pushing it out for sure. Okay, that's great. Awesome. You can really see it pushing into the door. Um, yeah, this is cool. And this is what you pay the big bucks for. I mean, this is like a $700 seal. No, I think this was like $500. So it's ridiculously expensive. Um, do you need it? I don't know. 
I don't know. I got this because I tell my clients to do stuff like this and I have to test it first. Um, so we're tightening it all the way down. Got one right here. This one looks like it could be pushed even harder. I have a feeling this is going to make a big difference. Um, I'm going to push this one in the bottom. You can actually see it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's coming out as I turn this counterclockwise. It's really pushing into the door, which is great. That's pretty good. Okay, now you can see I just filled that gap. No big deal. You know, really not the end of the world. This is construction. Nothing's ever perfect. Um, but that should do the job. I must say, like, just standing here, I think this top seal might have covered up a hole in my door that was coming through because, like, it, I've noticed a difference with this on, which is crazy. I notice these things. They're subtle, but... One more piece of metal to cut. The last one wasn't so bad. You know, I have my little dinky... Uh, you've seen it. It's like the tiniest little hacksaw that ever... It works pretty well. All right, there's the line for this one. Make sure to measure both sides because mine was off by an eighth of an inch, um, which, you know, with this type of stuff, it matters. So just measure carefully. I learned after my last cut to put something underneath so the cement doesn't scratch it. Not a big deal, but um, I'm going to cut this one out. Let's do it. All right, again, this piece is not totally flush up there, but part of that could be this guy getting in the way. So maybe I will trim that a little bit. But it is pretty much flush right there. So, but that's pretty bad. So I'm gonna fix that. So I think even with trimming that piece, it's still, um, it's, it's a good seal in the corner there, as you can see, but it's just kind of awkward because I think the door frame's not absolutely perfect square. But again, like I said, fill it with acoustic sealant, no big deal. Looks very clean in the end. All right, so there it is. Um, installed on the left-hand side of the door where the hinge is. Uh, got a nice tight seal. I'm gonna see if I can again push these in just a hair in a couple spots, see what this does. I think, oh yeah, I can see it pushing up against the door, which is great. Just a couple, a couple turns is really all it needs. And it pushes in pretty good. Um, yep, there we go. And you know, you also, I noticed pretty quickly after I installed the last one that uh, if you push this too close to your door, it could make it hard to close. So you kind of have to keep that in mind when they say install it snug uh, to the door, but not like really pressing into it. I, I think that's that's wise to do because otherwise you might have to take it all out and redo it if your door won't close properly. Oh, and there's one last one down here. So pretty incredible. Honestly, notice a difference already. Uh, my bottom seal is already great. Just putting in the do drop seal just to, just to see uh, what it does. So for the bottom of the door, um, like I said, you can see that there's, we actually put about a one inch, maybe a half an inch, one inch piece of cement fiberboard that the door actually butt ups against on the outside, which is honestly a great design. You can even do it on a double door system, have the same sort of lip here. Um, and then you might not even need this this bottom door stop, but I'm putting it in just to be overkill. Um, so it's going to go down here. I measured it out. It says to leave a 16th of an inch on each side, which I'm trying to understand how that works with uh, still keeping a continuous seal on both sides, but I measured it. It's going to be tight, but I think this will be good. Um, and it'll fit right in the bottom there and kind of see how this all works. And this is the, uh, the spring here that gets pushed in and drops the seal. And this can be adjusted once you have the door, once you have it on the door to get the right amount of drop. For me, since I have, you know, nothing to fill really, I'm gonna put it at the optimum of three eighths of an inch from the bottom of the door and it'll drop down that optimum amount. So I've made some markings on my door. This is where the edge of, you can barely see it, but there's a little pencil line there where I think the edge of this guy 
is going to have to go. And I'm going to experiment. I've never done this before, but I feel like, you know, I, getting this pin to hit just right is going to be tricky. And then I've measured from the bottom of the door. Um, there's a little three eighths of an inch gap. That's the ideal gap. And then the whole thing is, is, you know, with the seal kind of loose, it's about two inches. So I'm thinking this will be the top of it. And um, the bottom of the door is oh, it's like a 16th of an inch from this little rim here. So you can see I actually have, if you look under the door that goes even farther below, this is like all the extra mass and here's the actual hardwood door. So I've got a bank vault seal here, um, which is great. I mean, we're talking, this is hardcore and I'm putting in another seal here. Um, so you can see some of the bank vault seals. Now we got double bank vault seal here which is why this is pushing out so far. Ideally, we wouldn't even need this seal. And then you got your outer bank vault seal for the actual door. Um, you can see it right there, uh, the actual hardwood door. So as you can see here, this is not easy to do with one person, but if you have an extra hand, it'll be really helpful. But getting this on the perfect distance here is okay and then as long as we roughly have it the right height which i've marked over here um then i can level it out with the second screw once it's already in so i'm gonna see if i can do this we'll see how good my skills are all right so that was uh tricky but not the end of the world and then uh i'm gonna not put my screws in all the way in case i have to move them i'm gonna put a second screw here just use a level to Make sure it's level. No, definitely not. This is kind of what I expected to happen. It misses the hard edge and goes straight into that and, and would probably break that little pin. So we, we don't want that. So I got to move it farther over to the right a little bit. Um, and if I have to, which I'm really bummed about, I might have to cut that again, which really like i said really bummed so i am perplexed by this whole thing it seems like this nut needs to be screwed in more but it's really not threaded well i can't turn it without i'm worried about breaking it or something i put these covers on um, might need to trim that off i also put the cover on the back to see if that'll help uh the directions of course are absolutely terrible um but I guess, you know, we're just supposed to know how to do this. All right, just a little update. I got this set screw in as, as far as it can go. Even as you can see, even my compact driver was starting to eat it up. So that's that no more. Can't go any tighter than that. Um, now what I'm running into is that when this closes, there's not enough room on this side, I think. So I'm having some trouble because as soon as it hits this pin, it drops the seal and it actually won't won't really come over this lip, I think, or it's getting stuck here so I can't close the door all the way. So this is, <laughs> as you can see, uh, I've tried so many different uh, places. Luckily this doesn't go all the way through the door, but you know, you don't want to put a ton of holes in your door. Um, like everything with doors, I find this to be challenging. A lot of uh, give and take. If you're extremely skilled, contractor you might be able to do this in your first first go but it, it's challenging for sure um so i'm gonna cut this thing one more time give it probably about an eighth of an inch on here because there's the end cap that i didn't account for as well in my first measurement um and hopefully not have to make a bunch more cuts on this so we'll see well i finally got the door closed and this is finished although i cut it too short guys you know there's a little bit of a an edge missing there it doesn't matter for this door no, I don't even think I needed the bottom seal to be honest, but it's there. Um, so takeaways, this was a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, hire someone who's done this before if you can, or someone who's really skilled, um, handy person. Cause you know, these measurements can't be off more than a 16th of an inch. And if I'd had a, a, a miter saw, I think I could have done a better job of some even cuts and then, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just really hard to install that and i would actually say maybe like the the mortised under the bottom is the way to go but on this door that wouldn't work and honestly on this door see how the pin is barely hitting the metal here so the whole thing is not really working 
uh, for this design, which is just part of, partially uh, the fact that it doesn't really need a bottom seal because the bottom is going all the way up. And I, I think this is going all the way to the, the ground here, but it's a, it's a little bit bigger gap. Um, but I think in the end, uh, let's give it a test. All right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I think after that whole experience, the perimeter seal was easy, no big deal. Uh, I would certainly recommend using a miter saw, a crosscut saw, a hand saw with a metal blade on it rather than using a hacksaw. You know, obviously that took a lot of time, although with a hacksaw, you might get a slightly cleaner cut depending on the blade. Um, I would recommend uh, maybe hiring someone if you're not very handy yourself and just making sure you get that seal installed correctly. Uh, the bottom seal was really challenging uh, to get perfect. And I really struggled with the nut, as you notice in this video, like the little nut that gets pushed in that drops the seal. And uh, to this, I'm still like not convinced that it's the best seal for this door, nor do I think I'm going to really use them in my soundproof designs anymore. So now that I've done this, I know that I would rather use a mortise seal. So the seal that goes directly underneath the door and then would drop down. And that way it's not hitting the actual side of the perimeter seal, which I didn't really like. I'd, I'd rather that that hit the inside of the door jam, drop the seal on the immediately and then the perimeter seals hit the rest of it so that this is something i'm thinking about as i'm always doing these designs and i learned a lot by installing this on my own door so that's the biggest takeaway you could even do a semi mortised install so they sell those as well and they're actually cheaper the fully mortised and the semi mortised uh are both options that i think i would go for versus the this was a surface mounted meaning it went on the surface of the door another thing that i think i learned after installing it is that i should have put maybe a little spacer like a piece of wood spacer to push that bottom seal out a little bit so that it wasn't directly on the door and the reason for that is then i think the button would have hit the side of the metal on the perimeter seal rather than kind of starting to catch the rubber seal which could cause problems there so there's a lot of tiny details as you can see and there's nothing like you know learning learning in the field as they say so i hope this was helpful again if you're on this journey of of wanting to learn how to build a soundproof room the right way go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. I'll see you all every Monday with new videos on soundproofing and room acoustics.